Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm always grateful, as you guys know, to see you guys tuning in. So make sure that you are joining in the conversation today. Drop me some comments, let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. And um, if you have any questions or words of wisdom that you wanna share along the journey today, you guys know I love getting to interact with you guys and engage. And today I've got an important one just based on a bunch of different conversations that I've been having recently on this topic and kind of in the environment that we're in right now, I think it's kind of called for to just kind of be able to look at our environment, our relationship dynamics, the situation that's at play, um, and actually, you know, make sure that how we are operating is actually with emotional intelligence. And what I mean by that is, you know, emotional intelligence is making a situation better rather than worse based on our own input to it. Okay. And so basically, I think most of us could truly agree right now with the current climate, climate of the world that now more than ever, we really do need to unify, unify and not diversify, right? And, um, you know, there's different arguments uh, for and against that. And I've heard them all. And I, you know, I've been really um, capturing and soaking up a bunch of different perspectives um, on the current climate around the world, um, as I'm sure each and every one of you guys have been. Uh, it's kind of hard to get away from it. Um, but in particular, what I want to talk to you guys about is a way of gathering that information and being a really informed individual who's emotionally intelligent, right? And who is not being closed-minded, all right? So today's topic, as you guys might've seen, is that closed-mindedness creates division and open-mindedness creates unity. Now I had a much bigger, like longer title that probably didn't make sense before I, I um, kind of narrowed it down to this for you guys today, but I still want to share it because I think that um, it'll give you perspective. I want to talk about those differences between being open-minded and being closed-minded and how it's really impacting you and how you can build consciousness around how you're showing up and choosing to contribute to the to the conversations, um, to the environment, because whether you're conscious of it or not, how you're operating and how you're seeing and viewing things and the meanings that you're creating around um, the current climate, it's like it is having an impact, right? It, whether you're conscious of it or not. So basically, I'm going to give some examples about uh, kind of the um, situations that I've um, either been involved in or um, heard about, all right? And kind of take it to this kind of understanding level of our day-to-day -day interactions with people. So um, what I wanted to mention is that closed-minded, I want you to think about being closed-minded as a self-imposed prison, right? That is standing guard to some sort of fake treasure, right? Some faux treasure. It thinks that being right is like this gold mine, right? And it's standing guard to its own judgments and perceptions. And it's, you know, not willing to be open to any new sort of information that may come in, every, any different perspectives, right? And open-mindedness on the flip side of that is basically a freedom to expand and access valuable inner treasure that you can utilize to unify your external world, right? So that we can create order and connection and team rather than, you know, um, the chaos and the disconnection and the me against you competition, right? And of As to who's kind of got, got it right and who's kind of doing the wrong thing and who, what all this, all the conspiracy theories and all of that sort of stuff. And now I am coming to you with a very open mind, right? Like I have heard and listened to a lot of different perspectives around this, not all perspectives, just a bunch of different ones that I have access to. And it's been fascinating for me to soak up what's everybody feeling? How is this situation affecting people? And what I've really seen is people's innate drive to have certainty and be right. And oftentimes what you'll see is that's what's driving closed-minded behavior, right? Closed-minded people are trying to create certainty and be right, right? They're, um, they don't, 
that, that's what they care about. They care about being right, not truly understanding. Whereas open-minded people, they don't care so much as being right as they do about understanding, right? It's not about being right or wrong. It's about actually let's understand more. Let's learn more. And that's actually part of the beauty and the gift that we as human beings give to one another. Our differing perspectives, our differing views of different situations, of the world, of whatever, you know, and then being able to communicate openly about what we're seeing, about what we're perceiving, about what meanings we're creating to kind of, you know, to understand the world at large and to be able to share that and engage with others um, with an open frame of mind in terms of, okay, this is another human being who's got a totally different experience of the world, uh, totally different information sources, totally different uh, meanings that they create and, and uh, values that they focus on. What can I learn from their perspective that may enlighten my own in a really healthful, helpful way, right? And healthy way, Help, healthful right? <laughs> and, um, and basically, when we can have that kind of mindset and perspective, that is when we become intelligent human beings who are directing the courses of our lives from a place of understanding and deepening truth and an open frame to continue to expand and, and you know, not get caught up in, you know, this is what I believe and you're all wrong if you don't believe this and a total closed mindedness, right? Because all that does is, you know, create division, Right. And what I'm passionate about, at least in my own life, is actually creating unity, right, between diverse people. Right. I love that. That's why I love you guys. I love seeing, you know, where you are around the world, around what's inspiring to you about what's your what you're challenged by. You know, all those different things, um, you know, all those diverse um, ways of viewing the world and different corners of the globe that we're all in and bringing us all together in a really open framed kind of way where we're actually appreciative of our differences, our different perspectives, because we're open minded enough to learn, expand and grow from our interactions with one another and then encouraging each individual to expand on their own potential right and to be able to support people who are very different to you um, who bring very very different values and gifts and unique abilities to, so that we can actually enhance each other's lives right rather than try and make everybody just like us and or just have to be right and certain more than um, able to understand and get to the truth and the different perspectives and the expansion that that brings, right? You have to have, you have to establish a really healthy relationship with uncertainty. But most of the population, they're driven by certainty. They'd rather be right and be on the right team, right, than um, to actually understand all perspectives. And this is one of the major reasons I really don't like politics all that much, right? Um, I think that there are really important themes that need discussion, but how we divide and separate and segregate and it's very black and white, I just don't think that that's helpful, right? We need people who are um, able to go, you know what, this is a skill set over here and then we need this other skill set over here. How can we bring it together and co-create something like way more intelligent than either of us could do alone, right? That's, that's the kind of mentality that an open-minded um, person would have, right? And um, I've been hearing so many people have arguments over, um, you know, different, uh, different um, leaders, right, in the world. Like, I mean, there's lots about Trump, right? Even here in Australia, there's lots of talk about, um, you know, the president, president of the of United States, right? There's also a lot of um, talk, if I bring it down, um, you know, just to where I am in my state, you know, and people's differing opinions of the leadership and the decisions that are being made there. There's different global, like I talk to a lot of people from um, different countries who can look at what Australia is doing and think it's kind of nuts and controlling and all this sort of stuff and then see what they're doing as the right thing and the freedom. And, you know, what I always say, I can't help it. This 
this um, way of looking at the world um, tends to get me in trouble sometimes, but I'll, I'll never lose it, which is I have, um, whenever somebody brings a very strong black and white um, perspective to me, I can't help but to see the other side. And it's not because I want to make them wrong or make that one right. I just want to be informed. I'm just fascinated to understand. I don't, I don't even know what's right or wrong, but I'm interested in learning and I'm interested in, you know, utilizing and soaking up the wisdom and the experiences of other people from a diverse range of sources so that I can feel um, like I can be more understanding, right? Not right, not wrong, be more understanding, right? From all aspects. And the moment we dig our heels in is the moment we can realize we're more focused on being right than actually understanding. Because an open-minded person, even if somebody presents a very differing um, at first impression uh, perspective to you, what can they think about? What can I learn from that? How can it expand my own understanding? Right? So that they're, they're fascinated to learn from and converse with people who have very differing views because they, they're focused on understanding, up leveling their understanding, not on being more right. Right? And so Another um, another thing that I saw um, just recently was there's this petition going around and you might have read some articles about this or you might have seen something on the news or you might have just, you know, um, come across something on Facebook, right? And there's currently a petition. I just want to use this as a great example of what I'm talking about with you guys today. But there's currently a petition out um, for a Netflix movie called Cuties. Now, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to watch it. Um, because I'm somebody who wants to understand all the perspectives, right? And I came across um, a friend or, a, and you know, that actually was, you know, a bunch of different people actually that were um, sharing this petition. And they were saying, you know, that um, you need to sign this petition and we need to get rid of this movie because it objectifies um, young girls. It over hypersexualizes these young um, girls, right? I think they were like 11 year old girls or something. And, um, and I thought, well, like if you read something like that, right, your instant reaction as a human being, right, is usually going to be like, that's terrible. Like, you know, what is going on there? Why is that happening? Some closed minded people, what closed minded people would do is just go, yeah, I'm signing that petition. Oh my gosh. Like they just take this person's words on face value without any investigation, just on, okay, that person's right. And I think that's right. And I'm just going to do it right. This very closed minded approach to life. And I'm just going to sign that petition because yeah, that's wrong. An open minded person will do their research, right? Um, and you know, it's like, I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen the movie, what I did do so far, I'm going to watch it so that I'm more informed, so I'm understanding, not right or wrong, but understanding of the dynamics, so I'm more informed about my choices rather than just some random person saying, sign this petition because it's wrong. I'm going to I'm gonna look at that. And already what I've done is I watched an interview of the director and I and it was entitled, you know, why it was all about why she created this movie. And I watched that and I took that piece of information in. I'm like, okay, now I'm a little bit more understanding of the dynamic. I can understand first at, at first glance, okay, yes, people are um, upset about the potential hypersexualization of young girls. Again, I haven't seen the movie, so that's the piece of information that I have. They're pretty up in arms about it. There must be something to that, right? Take another step. I'm going to I'm going to go check out this interview with the director where she explains why she created this movie. Still haven't seen the movie yet. I'm just gathering pieces of information. I'm staying open. I'm not yes or no. I'm gathering an understanding. I watched this. Now it feels a little bit more balanced, right? Because now I'm seeing okay, 
it's she's not denying that there is the sexualization of young girls in this movie but what she's doing is giving more information about what's actually at play she's highlighting um different uh, like the actual challenges that we as a community as a society and in on a global spectrum um face you know these young girls in this new generation that us older people haven't personally experienced to the degree that these young very young girls have they're growing up with the internet at their fingertips every moment of every day they're growing up with um you know uh women being sex over overly sexualized and they want to look like those women or they want it they feel like that that gets them the acceptance and the approval so they want to be like that and so they don't even know what they're necessarily doing they're just kind of um they're they're um what's the word they're just kind of being like that right they're copying them right and they're kind they don't even know what that's saying right they're not trying to hyper sexualize themselves they're just looking at the world as it is with all of the information that they have at such a young age and not to mention access to porn right um and you know at such a young age where they don't even know what the hell is going on and it's no wonder that um they can be in that situation right and then they they put out their hypersexualized um images on the internet or whatever and they get approval and acceptance and love right for those um parts of all those things that they're doing those behaviors right and so what i could perceive and still i'm gathering all the information right i'm not a yes or no i'm i'm going to watch the movie i'm going to gather more information i'm going to go to the sources i'm not going to go to articles that are you know hyper focused on exaggerating the bad without actually um you know with actual true facts um that are just clickbait i'm going to go to the actual sources like an interview with the director to work out why did she do what she did right and when i watched that and i heard her talk about she's trying to highlight this very 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 real challenge for young girls and a whole new generation um of young you know young children who are growing up in a very different um environment to most of us adults right we, when we didn't have the internet and all this sexualized um you know um material uh before like i mean not at the level that they do now right and so um so that just kind of balanced it out for me i got the one perspective get it out sign this petition um it's terrible it should never happen and then i actually saw this other perspective which is hey we need a highlight we need some focus on this area people need to realize what's going on what's the experience for these young this younger generation how it's affecting them and then it's going to spark you know conversations about how do we support that how do we um break free of that how do we make this world a better place by understanding it more not just trying to be right or wrong or um you know just kind of just be uninformed and closed-minded about things or you know um we've got to look at a deeper level of understanding and so like i said i'm going to go watch the movie i'm going to do a little bit more research i already even saw some other articles um where they were saying some things that weren't even true right they were like saying some um some crazy stuff about um you know like there was a scene in the movie that actually wasn't even there right and so if this information is out there right then um people are got people just take it on face value people just read articles and believe it's true right without doing the research and coming to an understanding because they'd rather be certain and right than they would to actually understand the full spectrum and what that leads to is division right it doesn't lead to unity it's like division where nothing changes right because if we just sign the petition potentially i'm not saying that this is right right but if say i'm just using this as an example that i'm working on right now um but say you know we just go with that one example of outrage right an uninformed outrage and we just go yeah that's wrong division right if you believe that we should have this movie you're wrong um if you're signing the petition you're right right we have this division now we've created this whole different issue 
that's not at all focused on uh, what we could be doing, right? Because if we have open-mindedness, we can bring awareness to situations that are very uncomfortable and then we can unify on a, on a bigger issue as a diverse group of people who aren't focused on trying to be right or wrong, but are actually focused on a core issue that needs to be addressed on a human level, right? And then when we can do that, we can unify and we can be very intelligent about our growth as a community and a society, all right? So kind of went on a rant with that one. I hope that it um, resonates with you guys and I hope that it just gets you thinking, right? Like to just notice, am I being closed-minded or am I being open-minded? Remembering that closed-mindedness creates division, open-mindedness creates unity, and closed-mindedness is when you're just trying to be right and be certain and you don't really care about the understanding element unless you just want other people to understand you're right, right? Um, and open-minded people, they don't really care about being right. They care about understanding and expanding so that they can actually have a great impact on their environment, right? Emotional intelligence. I see emotional intelligence and open-mindedness kind of going very much hand in hand, right? So I hope this serves you. I definitely want to check in with you guys now, see who's been able to join me, and I'd love to hear your perspectives. I know this is kind of a... Um, kind of one up for debate. And like I said, you know, with the examples that I've used, um, I'm uh, just still in the process of gathering information. So Juan's here, good to have you. And uh, from Chile, good to have you, I love that. And Michelle's here and Brian and um, uh, Josie and Joe and Craig and Wendy and Alexandria and Brian, awesome stuff, thanks. I'm so grateful that you found some awesomeness here. And hello to you, beautiful Alexandria. And uh, Craig, good Sunday to you as well, my friend. And uh, Ashen's here, Lisa and Alex and James, much love. And uh, Judy is here and Craig, um, you're definitely a beautiful gift to my life. Thank you so much for always being um, the beautiful and amazing inspirational lady you are. Thank you so much. Um, very, so much love coming back to you, my friend. I really appreciate your kindness and uh, grateful that this is of value to you as well. And Luke's here as well and um, appreciate your kind words there, Craig. And Jerry, hi Vanessa, awesome to be on your live. Salute to everybody. Awesome. Always awesome to have you here, Jerry. And um, Craig, that's why I don't allow politics or religion on my timeline or my posts. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good way of going about it, right? So if we can know um, that different sets of information or different places of information can um, have a negative impact on us in some regard, I think one stage of development is separating from that, right? But the idea is, and what we're really talking about today, is getting to a place where you are not so um, affected by things on a personal level in a negative way that you can actually, um, and you're not so bogged down in your way of being right, being right, like that closed mindedness, but actually being able to get to a place where we can hold all these different perspectives from a multitude of different people and actually just use it to understand um, the concepts. I use it a lot of the time just to understand human nature, human behavior, you know, our interactions. How do we up level? How do we get understanding of one another? All these beautiful things that can come out of that. So I totally understand where you're coming from there, Craig. And also um, the journey of open-mindedness at, at the highest levels as well. And um, thank you for your words there, Craig. And Brian, um, to each their own. Let people think and believe what they want. Most have different opinions and perspectives and there is no real right or wrong in the end uh, when you really think about it. Absolutely, Brian. I love that perspective because you know, like you're going to have a certain set of values, right and wrongs and things that you stand for and stand against as are other people, right? And if we spend and exert all of our energy in an attempt to change other people into us or exert, um, you know, a perception that we're the ones who have all the 
truth or the rightness, right, then that's a lot of exerted energy in a direction that's not getting us very far, right? I'd much rather channel that to a deeper and deeper levels of understanding of myself, of human nature, of different people, and a, a connection, a unit, a, you know, creating a unity rather than a division um, so that we can actually work together on issues that are, you know, very meaningful, right? Instead of getting getting caught up in the me against you kind of mindset. So love that, Brian. And Nadir is here. And Pablo, um, question, how do you become understanding with people that are victims or easily offended? Yeah, good question, Pablo. Um, you know, what I've tended to do over time um, on my own journey is um, be very selective about who I allow into my inner circle, right? Because I went through a huge period of my life where I just dulled myself down and shut up my opinions so that I could make sure that, you know, I wasn't stepping on any, anybody's feet, right? Like in terms of um, offending them or whatever. Um, and I found that the best way, because a lot of times we can want to change their behavior, we can want to change the victims into people who are more empowered. We want to make them, yeah, stronger within themselves so they're not easily offended. We can get very overly responsible if we want to take them on a growth journey when we can see that, see that they need one. But basically what I found, again, over time, that's an, that's an area of exerting a lot of energy and not getting a lot of result. And the best strategy is to just role model for people the quality of connection that inspires you and what you want in your life, right? And, you know, we train others how to treat us. So, you know, if you can still be open-minded and open-framed and not, you know, utilize those connections to go, well, why am I so afraid of offending them? What do I make that mean about me? You know, why, like, and um, you utilize it for your own personal growth or just go, you know what, those people aren't the kind of people that I wish to surround myself with because what I value is open-mindedness and an ability to speak truth without offending each other. And again, it's all about role modeling it that, that way as well because some, some of those people that are in your life who you might deem to be victims or easily offended, maybe they just haven't seen another possibility, right? And it's not your responsibility to sh prove that to them, but how about just let's show up in the ways that we're really clear on how, how we, what we value in our relationship dynamics and being in the world and, um, and ultimately just role model that for them. They're either going to come on the journey or you're going to filter them out. So hope that's of help. And uh, Pablo, you signed it um, and saw the short and F that movie. <laughs> Yeah, see, there you go. All right. So you can gather, you know, those different pieces of information. I don't know how far you went on that journey. Um, and again, you know, like you said, each each to their own, right? People, Brian said, sorry, each to their own, you know, let people think and believe what they want. And, you know, I think it's a really great way of looking at it. Like when you don't have to take things personally, even if you're seeing people be closed-minded or, you know, from your opinion, doing it something unhealthy, when it doesn't mean anything to you, it doesn't impact you on a personal level, you know that you're growing, right? You know that you're being open-minded and you're not um, just trying to be right. So interesting. And Jay Castillo is here and Craig, political and religious people are closed off people because they choose not to look outside their perspectives. That's why I'm more attracted to spiritual non-political people like you, my dear. Thank you, Craig. Um, yeah, I mean, I also don't like just categorizing people like, yep, political people, yep, religious people. You know what? One of my favorite things to do is, um, particularly when I go to America, because you guys in America have um, a lot more um, different religions and it's just a bigger part of your life than it is here in Australia. And I grew up in a very like atheist family. Then I, you know, I did my high school and in a Christian school. So that's when I was like, got a taste for um, Christianity. But, um, you know, I I love when I'm in places like America to go into all the different churches and 
Go and learn from them. Go, what is it that you believe? Why do you believe that? And I try and work out, and it's not just in religion, it's like in any kind of different perspective or way of thinking or being in the world, I want to learn like why they do what they do and what's of value to them. How is it enhancing their lives? And how could I utilize some piece or element of that to enhance my own life, right? And um, that's the beauty of open-mindedness and wanting to understand. So so appreciate your share there, Craig and uh, Pablo. Loving that something was, you were finding something right here. And Dennis, um, love hearing other views. I don't need um, to be right, but need to be heard um, from people I care about. Yeah, that's a that's a valid need, right? And we need to have um, relationships in our lives, the close ones, where they are fulfilling on all of our human needs, right? We're doing that for one another. And that's part of the beauty of um, having, having an open mind and being in relationship at any level with another person who's got an open mind because they can actually hear you because they're looking to understand, not just be right. So I love that, Dennis. And Dale's here as well. And Wendy. Hi, lovely. See, I love new information. I'm about to watch it now. Be interesting. Have a blessed day. Oh, can't wait to hear your perspective on that, Wendy. Um, if you're open to sharing, um, any of you guys who want to watch it, I'm going to watch it tonight. Um, so the movie's called Cuties and it's on um, Netflix. And um, let's we can come back here, like drop me a comment after you watch it and tell me your honest perspective on the movie. I'd love to hear um, and watch the on Netflix. There's also if you go to the trailers section, you can also watch um, the interview and it goes for like six or seven minutes or something. But the interview with the director to get that perspective as well. And yeah, like I said, love to hear your thoughts on it. We can reconvene here. And uh, Pablo, please let us know when you watch it. Yes, I will, definitely. And uh, Craig, unfortunately, we have a lynch mob mentality and want to shut down things that we don't understand. Yes, uh, unfortunately, that's a large section of the population. Absolutely. And that's why I want to have a conversation like this with you guys so that we can all be consciously aware of when we're slipping into the pattern of closed mindedness, because as human beings, it's a natural tendency to want certainty and to be right, right? So um, it's very much connected to survival. So we need to build consciousness around that and then consciously choose to open our minds up to be more focused on understanding than we are on just simply being right. So love that. And Arian's here and Zin Zin and Juan and uh, Pablo. I'm watching it tonight, like I've, I've mentioned actually. And uh, Jerry, um, to keep open-minded will give us our rights of thinking and have our personal views. Absolutely. You know, and to be able to hold space for everybody's differing perspectives and, you know, just to be curious, to want to learn from other people. And, you know, I'm fascinated by why people do what they do, why they think the ways the ways that they do, why they believe the things that they do, um, you know, what what motivates and inspires them, what drives them. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to learn that about myself because I feel like that's the basis of self-mastery, right? And if we want to reach our highest potentials in life, we've got to know why we do what we do, right? We've got to be able to um, be the masters of ourselves, be the experts on ourselves. And a big way of how we develop to that level is um, our ability ability to understand others, right? And see all these different ways of being. So love that. And uh, Craig, some people love to create propaganda against things they don't understand. Yes, this is true. And Christian is here as well. And Jerry, to keep it simple, there is always two sides um, to a medal. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And Bill's here as well. And um, I oh, love ranting. You guys know me. And Christian, great topic. I agree. We must research first to get to our conclusions. Bang. I love that. I absolutely really love that about our community, you know, because um, you you wouldn't be attracted to any of these messages if you weren't an open-minded person, right? So I appreciate that. Thank you, Christian. And um, I appreciate your kind words there, Craig. And Victoria's here as well. And Craig, Seriously, don't ever dumb your beautiful self down and don't ever dull your beautiful shine, glow and speak as loud as a volcano erupting. Well put and very poetic, my friend. And Brian, how cool is that next? Like, oh, good. 
liking, loving that you're loving it. Thank you, Brian. And you're always welcome. Namaste to you. And Andrew's in the house. Hello to you. Um, oh, okay. You're so welcome. And oh, I don't, I'm like, okay, just saw what that kind of, I don't know how to do that. Anyway, about to sign off anyway. So um, Shayna is here as well. And Pablo, thanks, Vanessa, just stumbled upon this, but it was valuable. I'm super grateful um, that this came your way. And I'm grateful that you found some value in here as well. And I will definitely look forward to each and every one of you guys um, to come and, you know, go and watch that movie, right? Go and watch um, Cuties on Netflix and report back here. Drop me a comment. Let me know your perspective. Watch the interview as well and get informed and to a new level of understanding. And I invite you to go, you know, even if things are quote unquote, we think they're bad, right? Just to go, what's underneath this? What's deeper? Where's the meaning? All right. There's so much value in that and how we can utilize it to unify, right? Rather than create, create more division. All right. So, so much love to each and every one of you guys. And as I'm always saying, make sure that you are going out there and living authentically, loving deeply and contributing meaningfully and purposefully. So much love for each and every one of you guys. And so appreciate you contributing to the conversation today. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Much love.